now go. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Evening, guys. We'll get started very soon. Evening, Dr. Valles. Okay. Sit up. Come here. To go up. Raise your right hand and recite the tenets. Shi Jok. Courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self control, indomitable spirit. And recite the student mode. Shi Jok. I shall observe the tenets of Taekwondo. I shall respect the instructor and seniors. I shall never misuse Taekwondo. I shall be a champion of freedom and justice. I shall build a more peaceful world. Mark. Okay. Excuse me for a second. I may not be batting 100 today. We had a board meeting last night that finished just before one o'clock. So I'm a bit jaded, but we'll do our best. Jug on the spot. Arms forwards. And back. One forward, one back. Change. Change, 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 and jogging, feet in and out, forward and back, And left leg back, walking ready starts. Beep. Up to Oligi, 10, hala. Two. Set. Day. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. Yaru. Aho. Yu. Change feet. Hold up. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. Yaro. Aho. Yu. Maro. And left leg out, sitting ready starts. Chubit. Just watch your angle here. Side rising kick. Hold up. And the same direction. Do. Set. Net. Yasa. Yasa. Ilga. Yaru. Aho. Yu. And the other way. Come up. Yu. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Ilga. 
Yaro. Aha. Watch the foot angles. Yo. Baro. Foot action punch. Right side. I'm going to spotlight somebody. Who I'm going to spotlight? Isabel. Okay, foot action punch. Right side. She jump. Remember to breathe. Bottle. And left side. Uh, Isabel, just watch. Sometimes you bring your feet in a little bit too close together. They just come in kind of halfway when you move forward and when you pivot. So from here, just come halfway and go back rather than coming all the way and going back. Left side. It's up. Bottle. Cool. Now I'm going to spotlight Jacob. Sajumaki. Right side. She jump. Bottle. Just watch when you're crossing, Jacob, you're lifting up a little bit too high. You want to keep that cross in front of your chest so that your knuckles are about the height of your shoulders. You're up about the height of your eyes. They're just a bit too high. Uh, and make sure that other hand, of course, pulls right back to the hip. A little reminder on that one. Okay, left side. Get up. So a little bit high there, Jacob. Just lower your arm down a bit. Like that's it. Yes. Shoulder height's a little bit lower than you think. You just look, if you do it side on in a mirror. Or actually, if you now turn and look, can you see the camera? If you turn your head, can you see the camera? Okay, so you see how high your fist is now. So you're just a little bit high before. So that's a good opportunity to see yourself. Knock that back leg out. It wasn't bent before, but it kind of is now. And bottle. Good work. Okay, Chon Jitul is for Liam. Remember, if you're in limited space, guys, do full length stances, full power movements, and then adjust your space through the next movement if you run out of room. Okay, don't do little stances or things. Do a full stance and then shuffle your space and then do the next movement. Chanjito. Shi jok. So a little bit more spring in the knee, Liam. Tip that knee a little bit more to get a bit, that's better, yes. That'll help you to relax, get a bit more sine wave. Just watch that body facing in your L stance. You tend to be a little bit too far forward. Good, that extra spring in your knee, Liam, makes a huge difference. It'll help you to relax and you'll be able to drive into the movements. Good, but all. Okay. Let's watch Mr. Lockie do his, do Dangun. Okay, Dangun to be. She jump. Dangun. Mind blank? Yes, so it's been a lot longer since I've done Dangun than any other pattern. Okay, do it with me. We'll do it together. Everyone else, if you finish it, you'll get a chance to do it again, and Dr. Vales will give you feedback. Son cal, son cal.
Eye punch. Eye punch. Eye level. Okay. Eye level. Eye punch. All punches in Dangana High. And battle. I'll give you a chance to repeat that one again later, Lockie. Okay. We're at Colinio. Here he is. We are up to Dos Anto. Be. She jump. Good power, Colden. Nice. Good. Make sure your stance, your feet are on the same line. Baro, Colden, you're getting that delay in your hand. You're crossing really well, with the exception of the two rising blocks. <clears throat> the two rising blocks, you are one, two, like this. Oh, I should spotlight me if I'm going to show you something. <laughs> Otherwise, there's not a lot of point. I think I did that with Lockie doing done good as well. From here. You're doing one, two, one, two. Uh, but everything else you're delaying really well. That's it. So after this. Um, also, just watch that you drop that heel in the walking stance. Heel down for the first of the punches. Seven. And movement seven, the release. You, can't, you won't be able to do this with your hands when someone's grabbed you. It just goes forward a bit and turns down. Very little movement here. That's it. Okay, so try not to do this. Practice it with a partner and you'll find that it's not possible to do this. It doesn't work. It's just here. You're pushing the shoulder and the hips forward and turning the palm down. Nice. We've got more victims. Here we go. Victim Cam. Is in the spotlight for one yo. Ready. We can still see the rest of you on the panel above, guys. So you'll be able to um, get some feedback from Dr. Valles. Okay. Uh, Cam, could you just change your angle a little bit? I've got the, a good view of your ceiling. Yeah, cool. Lovely. Okay, one yo. Remember, Cam, we want to relax and accelerate. She jump. Use that core. Good. Barrel. Cam, you need to emphasize your weight on the back leg because I can see your knee dropping on the inside. That means you're more on the 50 50 than 70 30. So, really force yourself to emphasize the weight on the back leg. Go a little bit longer though, Cam. That's probably too much weight on the back leg there. So, so it's re really on the rotation of the hips as well. Yeah. Okay, a couple of things for you, Cam. The knife hand inward strike, you're stopping a little bit too much on the side. Your body, shoulder position is this way, and your strike is, should be over here. Okay, so you're not striking here where there's very little movement in your arm, you're striking in this way. So more towards the angle. 
okay? And then from here, when you do your a fixed arm side punch, bring your hand back to your hip and really drive that hip out. You can get a lot of core power into this punch. That's so don't sacrifice that core power. Uh, circular box, remember the circular box, not slow. It's normal speed, it's just got one continuous breath. Okay, so make sure it's not slow motion in the first bit. Uh, your right side piercing kick, your left side piercing kick, and that one looked really good. Your right side piercing kick, you're not quite pivoting that supporting foot enough. So make sure you're pivoting that supporting foot 75 degrees away from you. Um, those were the major things that I got. Anything else, Dr. Valles? Yeah, the first uh, side piercing kick was uh, a little bit flicky. Um, so just just watching the ch the chambering of the of the kick. And shot. Uh, Colton, you've got is the relaxation height of palm chukumaki the same as any other technique? Chukumaki is rising block. Uh, what palm block did you have? Oh, palm. Um, you mean in Jungun? Oliomaki? You're talking um, about the sorry, time upward I block? Autocorrect. I think I tried to write Pamok Chukyomaki, but it autocorrected me. Ah, Pamok Chukyomaki, rising block. Okay, good question. So okay. the, the crossing position of the, of the rising blocks and down by your floating ribs, it's lower here. So most of the blocks that we're doing and strikes we're doing at this stage, we're crossing in front of our at shoulder height, so, either in front of our chest or in some cases across in front of our rib cage. But Chukyomaki crosses lower down by your floating ribs. So, but for most blocks, you're after. Uh, no, sir. For oh. most blocks, when you, walk, when you relax, I can see you. So demonstrate. But not trickle. Uh, when you relax your hands before crossing in most blocks, it's below the cross height, right? It's, it's yeah. Understand. So if we're doing a three count, you're asking about number one. Yes, sir. Or about number two. Yeah, right. Okay. So yes, it probably will be a little bit lower because this is just relax your hands. And so when the crossing is going to be down here rather than here, it makes sense that that relaxation might be a little bit lower as well. Um, I haven't got a fixed answer for your question. It's something that I've never really asked one of the Grand Masters, but it's a, it's a really interesting question. But I would do them just slightly lower. I'd be thinking about, you know, if you're, if you're doing knife defense and someone's got a knife against your abdomen, you don't do your, your passive stance like this, right? Your passive stance is down here where the knife is. It's kind of just, that's where it's ready to, to act. Yes, uh, and it's kind of the same principle, I would say. From here, if I'm doing my uh, doing forearm low block, hands be here, cross and block. If I'm doing rising block, your yeah, hands would be a little bit lower just naturally. Yes, Probably sir. not overemphasized. I wouldn't have them down at floating rib height. I wouldn't be down here in the relaxed right position, but they'd be slightly lower than they normally would. Good so, question. Nice. Other questions? It's, uh, it's a kind of a compromise because you do not want to lower and raise your arms to lose energy so you want to keep them relatively high but you want to be natural and not stressing your shoulders so if you raise your arms a bit too much you can feel your deltoids and your shoulder rising so putting some stress but if you're here it's more relaxed you, and you can feel it yourself so it's yeah, finding the, the natural position, of that first position is just while keeping the your head. arms relatively high so that you don't waste energy raising them all, all the time. Cool. Okay. Now we'll move on. What are we up to? Your gok. I'm going to do this one as a gallery so we can kind of watch you all at the same time. Your gok tool should be. Okay. And. She jump. Keep the heels down, Liam. Don't lift the heels in your sitting stance. Spring that knee, Liam, like we talked about before. Spring the knee. Lockie, try and add some core power. Try and get the power from your hips.
Jacob at the end there, movement from movement seven to uh, movement thirty-seven to movement thirty-eight. Do the first one of those double forearm blocks again. Do the first one again. Now bring the front foot back to the other foot and then step out with the other leg. Nah, no, nah, bring it right back together, feet together. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the last two movements of your got, foot to foot like that. Uh, Liam and Isabel, do not rush your connecting motion. When you do gold chomaki and then the punch, it was too rushed. Come on, the first one, then the second one, and the punch. But so one sign wave, but you're rushing too much. Locky the, the position of the hands. Blocks, a little bit more backward motion. That's it, and then block forward. Uh, you were doing them with very, the blocking hand didn't have a lot of movement in it because it didn't have much backward motion. So it's got to come back like a forearm guarding block, but your hand position is just a bit different. <laughs> it's the same sort of idea. So it's got to come back and then go forward. Uh, Colin, can I just ask you to do the side kick elbow, side kick elbow for me again? Don't come too close to the camera though. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Cool, thank you. Uh, you've got a, a tendency to do a little bit of a, relax, relax, relax. You've got a tendency to do a little bit of a pause halfway through the movement. So you wanna go from here, one, two, don't stop. One, two, one, two, don't stop. And then here in particular, you've got one, and then you're doing the movement. It starts here, one, two. Kick, one, two. So make sure you've got, you're not doing an extra pause in the middle there. Nice, cool. Okay. Uh, just, just a reminder also, uh, the X stance, you need to drop your body into the X stance. Don't stand. I've seen still too many of you standing too much in your X stance, in the jump. Yeah, right. Sit in the X stance. Sit, sit, sit. Okay. Now, everybody do your own pattern. Your own pattern. Also, remember when you jump into X stance for distance, your feet, like a new got, your feet go 45 degrees and your body is half facing. Okay, so my finished position is here. Both feet at 45 degrees, my target is here. If I'm jumping for height, usually my stance will be straight this way, as it is in Tang A. Okay, because with the Yul Gop, I have forward momentum. I have to stop my forward momentum. And if my feet are facing this way, I can't stop my forward momentum and I'll fall over. If my feet are facing straight ahead, I can't hit my target because my back fist is over here. So I have to go 45 degrees, half facing, sit low. In Tege, because I haven't got forward momentum, I've got upward momentum, I can have both my feet pointing this way. Okay, everybody doing your own pattern. Dr. Valles is gonna watch you for feedback while I do a quick bit of research to share with you. Jabi. She jump. Blue belts, your um, Dwight Balsogi rear foot stance, you will have to work on them. Okay, so that back kick you have to watch. Liam, drop into your stance, your standing. You really, yes, better.
Okay, uh, Colden, your um, song on Badak, Oliomaki, a bit more snappy. So come from uh, a bit lower. Think of having your little fingers coming along the seam of your pants and snapping up. Yeah. Paro, everyone, relax. Okay. Uh, yeah, so your Dwit. Dwight Balsogi, so rear foot stance, uh, blue belts, you're standing too much, so you, need, you really need to drop into your stances. Um, cam, uh, when you do your two kicks, so the high turning kick followed by the back piercing kick. Uh, the back piercing kick, I could see from the angle with your knee uh, that you were a bit too open and not straightening fully your back piercing kick. So I don't know if it is the configuration of your space, but something you should be aware of. Oh, that's looking good, Colton. Okay, grab a quick drink, and then come and sit down in front of the camera. Okay, I'm going to share a couple of screens with you. Just stretch off while you're sitting. The first thing I'm going to share is where to find the second thing that I'm going to share with you. So, this is our website, of course. You know this. Oh, while, I'm, while I think of it, I need a favor from you guys. Uh, you know that all of these classes that we've recorded are on our website. They're under members. You've got recorded classes down the bottom here. All of our recorded classes actually sit in YouTube. So uh, please go to the YouTube channel and follow our channel so that we can get a, a few more clicks and, um, and like the videos. So even though you're doing them live, please just go in, take a look and go, yeah, that was a cool class and, and tick the class. That would be awesome. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to show you. Actually, it is. Down the bottom of this page, so once again, showing you where it was, it's under recorded classes and resources here, under members, underneath, all of our list of classes we have here a bunch of home resources so there's home worksheets for children you can you know there's some fun little stuff you can do there if you want to but this is the good stuff resources for all students what i'm going to show you now is this composition of taekwondo poster there's some really amazing stuff here that uh that master or kura has put together and made available to everybody during these periods of lockdown so take advantage of them uh, I can stop sharing that and show you the one that I actually want to share. We stylize this a little bit. But raise your hand if you're familiar with the composition of Taekwondo. Raise your hand if you're not familiar with the composition of Taekwondo. Okay, so this helps to frame up all of the physical aspects of what we do in Taekwondo. So there are five components Masaro could have stylized this a little bit and repeated them. In the original diagram, they're all just shown once, but in a circle. As you can see, the five elements are listed there. The first is fundamental movement. So all of the movements that we have in our patterns, all the movements we have that aren't in patterns, it's practicing them by themselves. Figuring out how to develop power. You can do them in pad work. It's all of those sorts of things. Just using the movements, understanding how the movements work and trying to get the movements correct. Once we've done the movements in isolation, and you've, for each of your color belt grades, as you know, you've got compulsory fundamental movements that are listed in your book. So they're the ones we expect you to get competent at at your level, and to know, of course, all the ones below. After you've learned the fundamental movements, then the, we put them together into patterns. So many of the fundamental movements are used in the pattern sequences. When you're looking through your student handbook, you should notice that most of the fundamental hand movements for each grade are in your pattern, particularly once you get to about green belt. The fundamental hand movements are taken from the pattern and we're saying you have to learn these. Then you learn to apply them in the pattern. The third thing we do is we then apply those same fundamental movements and the movements from the patterns in our sparring. So this is your pre-arranged sparring, your step sparring, also ideally semi-free and free sparring. I remember one of the things that the general was, was kind of unhappy about, he thought that we used too small a range of techniques in our free sparring, sort of psychics, turning kicks and punches. He wanted us to be able to use any of our taekwondo movements in free sparring. 
he called this, uh, in his mind, this is what we call, he called traditional sparring. Unfortunately, I think it was misinterpreted and it has become what is now pre-arranged free sparring in our tournaments today. Uh, but free sparring, you want to try and think about some of those movements. And many of you are already applying things like palm upward blocks and palm downward blocks and outward blocks and things like that. So a lot of these things are useful in free sparring and can continue to be used. The fourth stage is then conditioning. So this is conditioning of your muscles and your body. It's things like push-ups and crunches and leg strength exercises, as well as, particularly when you get a little bit older, it's conditioning of your tools. So it's like, well, at any age, of course, it's hitting pads, getting strength in your wrist and things like that. And then once your bones are finished developing, it's things like conditioning on the floor, doing push-ups on your knuckles, those sorts of things. In the fifth stage is your self-defense. So in theory, any movement that you've learned in fundamental movements, you should be able to apply in a self-defense situation if you understand it and you're proficient at it. So every movement goes through that cycle, fundamental movements, patterns, sparring, condition the tools that you need for that movement, and then use it in self-defense. And then you learn more fundamental movements, which is why it's shown in a circle and it just continues and continues and continues. So one of the key things I want you to think about is have you learned movements just as fundamental movements or just in fundamental movements and patterns, or are you thinking about how those movements apply? How can you use them in your step sparring? How can you use them in your, in your self-defense and your free sparring? So what I want you to do now is take one of your movements or two of your movements from your fundamental movements Practice them for a moment on the spot, and then I want you to put together a step sparring movement that uses it. Whether it's one step sparring or two step sparring, I don't mind, you can do three step sparring if you like. Choose one or two fundamental movements, maybe one, uh, one block, one attack, and then put together the attack and the defense for step sparring using the movements that you've chosen. Okay, so choose some movements on your spot, left and right side, go. Do each one a dozen times, try and get better at it, then do the second movement. Where you go, in your own time. If you think, trying to think of what movement to do, just go through your pattern in your head and pick two of the movements. Go through the pattern on the floor if you want to. Pick two movements. So what are the um, fundamental kicks for blue belt other than the flying kicks? For blue belt, all of your fundamental kicks are flying. So flying front, flying turning, and flying side. Well, I haven't done one step sparring yet, so I don't know how to do that, which is generally the, one, the flying kicks. Ah, one so. step sparring, the principle of one step sparring is really easy. Getting good at it is hard. But I'll show you that the fundamental of one-step sparring, your ready position for attack and defense is parallel ready starts. How one-step sparring differs from two-step and three-step is you do the same thing on left and right sides. So if I were going to be very, I think in fact your first blue belt one is a four-fist punch aimed at the partner's solar plexus, and then your defense is palm upward block, flying front kick. So I do it like this. And then I'll be defending. Hop. Hop. And that's it. Then you just do hundreds and hundreds of times with lots of different combinations. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, no problem. You can just unmute and ask if you want, Colin. I could answer. You got Preparation talking. position for X knife and checking block. Ah, oh, yeah, good one. That's a tricky movement. I'll do it quite close up to the camera. It actually, it's, a, it's an unusual movement. It's one of those ones where you think, how does that actually work? And until you practice it, you don't get the feel for it. 
your hands actually start relaxed at your side and predominantly they come inwards. There's very little up movement. It's not this. This is an X knife hand rising block. But an X knife hand checking block is here. So you just extend to the side until you're about to get tension in your shoulders. Yeah, just relax open. It's same sort of position as twin fist vertical punch. Same sort of position as uh, straight fingers at thrust. Pretty much the same. Hands, um, hands, palms up a little bit or angled a bit. Relax loosely clenched fists. And then just from here, open out a bit and close up. So, front leg, front head. Okay. And then the practice is doing it. Now, the coolest one is when you catch a punch. General takes yes. to do it every time. So someone comes in with a punch and you're, and the punch is caught between your hands. And then if you're actually applying this movement from here with either of your hands, you can then rotate and grab the partner's wrist and go straight in with your own counter attack. It's a really beautiful movement. Nice. Control the hands when you're kicking, Liam. Keep your hands up when you kick. Make it look good. Good tech one though, always looks good. So even when you do uh, these exercises, watch your stances. It's a good time to practice correct stances out there um, all the time because these are fundamental movements and because you'll be using them within the patterns uh, if you nail them now it will be much easier afterwards just unpause and ask him so um could a straight hand up thrust thrust catch i went up an x first knife an x knife hand chicken block catch a straight hand thrust up yes in theory, I don't see why not. Christian? Good. Remember the secret to step sparring is to do every sequence multiple times. Okay, don't just do it once and do the next one and then the next one and the next one because you don't get a chance to get good at it. Repeat the same sequence at least six to 10 times before you do the next sequence. So, Colin, twin palm upward block, nice thinking. Uh, one little thing that makes it difficult for, for one set sparring is that it's got two opponents. Yes, sir. But that's, that's, my, that's my problem. So it's supposed to be for something like, I always thought it was for something like the um, twin fist upset punch. But... That doesn't really make sense, does it? Uh, no, because the twin fist upset punch is also done for two opponents. So that doesn't really work for sparring. It doesn't work for one on one sparring. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, we, we have, and I've seen, I think Master McFarl at one point uh, for one of his gradings did two on one one step. So that was but really cool. A kick as well. He could go here and then. Yeah, right. It gives you lots of options, right? Um, doing demonstrations is a really good way to, to show that sort of stuff off. So getting the opportunity just to play uh, and then you can get out there and do it and try things that you don't normally get the chance to do with one-on-one -on -one scenario. So could you use the, the, the question was uh, the twin uh, palm upward? Could the twin up, palm upward block be used to defend against the twin fist upset punch is the question. Uh, no. Yeah. No. Well, Sorry, Colin, follow-up question? Seems strange to me. Uh, it was just a, a different idea, sir. Um, could you use this block? Block the reverse knife inward? Yes. Sorry. Yes, absolutely. The side front block is designed against something that's coming across from the side, like a turning kick or a yeah, reverse knife inward strike. Ideal. Thank you. Just a, a side comment on, the, on that technique. Uh, the attacks are coming from your side fronts. 
So you have two techniques coming from each of the side fronts. So that will be two attackers. So it cannot be one attacker coming with uh, to the upside punch. General Che used to say with twin fist upset punch, he'd say two attackers or one really fat one. Yeah. <laughs> but then he'd laugh because of course there's no targets if you've got one person that's broader. Okay, I'm gonna increase the level of challenge. This time everyone is putting together their own two-step sparring technique. Your own two-step sparring technique. So you gotta think a little bit more about the attack and the defense, the distance, the angles. And you're not allowed to use any of the ones from the syllabus. Go. Whatever you do, just be Part of this, remember for two step sparring, one hand attack, one foot attack, either hand then foot or foot then hand. Good tip. Keep it simple to start with. Until you've done a few of these, the easier ones are better, to, are easier to put together. One hand attack, one foot attack. Think of distance and angles. Remember, when you defend the first technique, you must be in a position to be attacked by the second technique, or well, the second technique doesn't make any sense. A nice trick for you all. You should know that two-step sparring, we perform it always going forward here in New Zealand. But, that is not necessarily the case. So you can do the first movement forward and the second movement backward if you're lacking space at home. There is a sentence in the encyclopedia that says, like three step sparring, there are two ways of performing. But it doesn't say what those two ways are. <laughs> so a couple of simple examples for attacks. I might do back piercing kick, X, fist, uh, X stands back for side strike. It's one example of an attack that I could use for two step. Yeah. Something else, maybe something where I use a twisting kick. So I might go straight finger to thrust, middle twisting kick. Oh, I have to be a low twisting kick because my opponent's in front of me. Huh! Okay, so put the attack together first and then put the defense that applies to that attack. It's two examples. Ah, Cam, nice question. Does a consecutive kick count as one or two kicks? Okay, if you're attacking, stick to one. If you're doing your counter attack, the consecutive a kick can only be used in prearranged sparring if it's flying. Because you can only do one counter attack, okay? In step sparring, you only do one counter attack because one, one attack is sufficient for victory. It's one of the reasons our belt goes around our waist once. But if you're in the air and you do four or five, that's so cool, we just count it as one. So it was one really good one. Two hands, Liam. Make sure you extend your other hand and pull it back to your hip when you do your palm downward block. So from here, extend your other hand and then pull it back to the hip as you block. That's better. You should always feel like you're using two hands equally in your hand movements, with few exceptions. Nice, Jacob.
Okay, come on. Quick round of demos. Everybody get ready for the demos. We will start with Cam. And Mackie, lucky. Isabel, you're next. Nice, Cam. Good. Okay, Isabel, get ready. Go. Do you breathe? Good, nice Isabel. The challenge with that, just make you've got to wait, make sure that you pause before you move out of the line of the attack. You can't do that until after they're on the way to attacking you. That's good. Okay, next up we must have Liam. One second, Liam. Okay, get ready. Where you go? Oh, a couple of back kicks. Nice. Good. Think about where the targets of the opponent are. That's good. Okay. We might be up to Colden next. Good work. Then we must have Jacob. That's okay. Start again, Colton. That's all right. I thought you were being ambitious attacking with a flying kick. You are. Awesome. Nice. Nice, Colton. Wow. Awesome. Okay, Jacob, we've got to find you. There you are. Go. Nice. Good, Jacob. Nice thinking. That one fit together really well. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Okay, Lockie, I think you're up. You're up. Good. Good work, guys. Nice. A couple of those were good and challenging. I'd see an attack come out and I think, oh, that's interesting. How's he going to block that one? That's great. Okay. Two set sparring is tremendous fun when you spend some time just creating it. But just like we, well, we only spent a couple of minutes there, but you then got to make sure that you repeat, repeat, repeat and do, do the same with your partner. And you might find when you first put something together, you go, oh, that's not going to work and you tweak it. But once you get it, you like anything else, repeat it six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times so that you really get comfortable with it before you go on to something else. A mistake that a lot of people make, and this is very true of prearranged free sparring. People race through it and they put something together where the sequence would be quite nice, but it's rushed. And, and it doesn't look polished. You've got to, got to get it looking polished and then you can make sure that it's actually feeling like it's working. Okay, quick quiz. I've got to change to my gallery so I can see everybody. Okay, parallel ready starts. I'm going to test you. 
an exercise for your brain as well as your body. I'm going to call the name of a technique, and I want you to do that technique on the left side and the right side and keep going until I give you another technique. Okay, ready. Walking stance, knife hand, high side block. Go. Keep going, left and right. Good. Okay, come on. Rear foot stance, palm downward block. Go. Sir, you are too nice. I usually do that in Korean. Oh, I'm getting there, Dr. Barnes. I'm getting there. <laughs> nice. Yep. Haha. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Two hands, remember. Extend your other hand out and pull it back. You're going to extend it out and pull it back to get two hands on this movement. So I'm from the Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, nice. Don't go too much on the outside of the body. Stay aligned with your back foot. Couldn't saw song called Chukyumaki. Couldn't saw song called Chukyumaki. Nien just saw your pull cup tugi. This is a red belt technique, so juniors, you can watch if you don't know it. Nien just saw your pull up tugi. Now juniors can do it too. So it's now my L starts. My L starts is facing towards the rear. And I'm Sir. striking behind me with one elbow. So I'm going to right L starts. My, most of my weight's on my right leg. Uh, probably looking in like it's in the mirror. But anyway, like it's not in the mirror. And I'm using my right elbow. So back hands, back elbow. The other hand is just reaction force. Your pulk up to me. You just saw your pulk up to me. Okay. Go to Chagi. Everyone knows Go to Chagi. Come on. Oh, oh. I hope everyone knows Go to Chagi. Hook and kick, the feeds. You can't even do it. What is that? Okay. Murup up to Bashigi. Murup up to Bashigi. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of up country up to Bashigi. I want to see Murup up to Bashigi. This is up kumchi. This is muro. Muro is your knee. Okay. Another tricky one for you. Bal dong dolo chagi. Piece it together. You should be able to figure this out from what you know. Baldum Dolo Chagi. Everyone point to your ball. What's your ball? Yes. Oh, Roland. Yes. I think you got it. Show me again. 
No. Nope. Oh. oh, I didn't. Oh, Don, it's so close. What's, what's Korean for this bit? Alcal. Sorry? Alcal, sir. Uh, Balcal, that's right. What's Korean for this? Songkal. Songkal, sir. Songkal, so what's Bal mean? What sword? A, a knife, sir. A blade. Uh, right. The thing that's in common between Songkal and Balkal is Kal. That's the blade. Hamish, ask Liam. Foot knife, sir. Well, we think he'd like Spotify Premium. Foot. Foot sword. Bal is foot. Bal kal foot sword. Bal is foot. Okay. What is Songkal Dung? Everyone show me Songkal Dung. The reverse knife hand, right? So the reverse knife hand. Think about that. So Bal kal uh, Songkal Dung. Is your reverse knife hand. Okay. Show me Baldung Donatani. Yes, Colin. Nice. Baldung. Your instep. Good. And come on. Okay. That's enough work for the brain. Let's stretch off a bit. Okay, so now left leg uh, out, right leg over the top. So a little bit of thinking work today. Did some good work on patterns. Hopefully you all got something to work on. Giving you that, spotlighting you and giving you a little bit of feedback there would have been, was helpful with that. Getting you thinking a little bit with your step sparring. Talking about the composition of Taekwondo. And change sides. And then at the end there, just challenging that thinking. Make sure you know all the movements in English and Korean all the way through to your syllabus. And both legs out, stretching forward. And legs apart, sitting nice and tall. Tuck your bum, uh, tuck your core in nice and tightly, and then lean down onto your left leg. And sitting up, right leg. There you go. Breathe nice and deeply.
and up, sit nice and tall and come down to the center. Bring your legs in, give them a little bit of a shake, standing up, left leg behind. Do take a moment to download that composition of Taekwondo poster and take a look at it. You'll see that there's some other really good stuff there that Marcel Okun has done. He's got uh, posters for many of the, the famous heroes from Taekwondo. So, that your patent history is named after, like Admiral Yisun Shin for Chung Mu, uh, Yogok Tege, I think a, a, a lot of those guys have, he's done A4 posters for. So really, really worthwhile looking at that set of resources. Remember it's at glendowry.com and then go under uh, members, syllabus sheets and resources or recording classes and resources, one of those two. I think it's recorded classes and you'll find them down that list. Underneath all the recorded classes, you've got all those resources. And change. And also very much appreciated if you find the Benicia Beach channel on YouTube, follow it and like a few videos. It's all these recorded classes that are stored there. It's got like over a hundred videos or something there now, so. But they people watching to watch them through our website. So they get a few views, but no likes. So please like them. And you're ready to shake. Turn the left and tidy up. Very much hoping we're allowed back into the Dojang soon. Uh, with the announcement that happened today, it probably won't be for a little while, but I'll, I'll find out what happens, uh, both from the announcements that get followed up from our CEO that tells us what's going on with Sport New Zealand, and also from the school, from the venues themselves. So I will keep you posted through our normal email channel, and I hope to see you back inside the Dojang very soon. Uh, but at the very least, this week we're training in here. We've got lots of recorded classes, so get on there and have a go, uh, and keep reading. Make sure you're reading your syllabus books and things as well, so you, you're getting familiar with that material. There's some amazing material in those books, so get into it, and I look forward to seeing you on, oh, tomorrow night, Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dr. Valles. Sit up. Kill me. Take what? And how's that? Thanks, Thank guys. Good night. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, sirs. Thank you all. Thanks Thank for you. coming, guys. Thanks, Dr. V.